Hello and welcome to The Wedding Dish Podcast. Grab your fork and knife and take a seat at our table as we dish on all things weddings. You'll hear stories and tips from real couples and wedding pros about love, life, and entrepreneurship. I, of course, am your hostess with the mostest on The Wedding Dish Podcast and the CEO of Photos from the Hardy and District Bliss, Sarah Alipin. And today, sadly, our little French bulldog, Bud, is downstairs taking a little nap in the sun, so he is not joining us today. Before we get started, if you haven't listened to last week's episode, you have to check it out. Molly Party joined us and talked about how you can move your guests through and transition to different moments and really um, craft a soundtrack for your wedding in a really fun way with the music that you choose. Um, so I, you definitely need to check it out. And thank you all for tuning into The Wedding Dish today. I am excited to be chatting with you. I am coming off a horrible cold that actually made me reschedule several of our podcast guests. Um, just a normal winter cold, but man, was it a doozy. So um, I know I sound a little bit funny today, but I wanted to come in and share some content with you all. So I've been getting a lot of questions recently um, on this podcast, and it's been specifically about photography. And one of the most common questions that I have, I'm going to answer for you today. Well, several of them, but first we're starting with one. Um, So what should you send your photographer before the wedding? You've booked them, you're excited, you're getting close to the wedding, um, and what do they need in order to successfully capture your wedding day? And of course, your photographer should ask you for all of the things that they need. So really, Keep an eye out for the email that's going to inevitably come through from them. Um, But just, you know, if you are one of those people who really plans ahead, these are some of the things you can send that'll just make it a lot easier. And then you're not pulling things together at the last minute. So the first thing your photographer is going to need is your timeline. Um, It's really important that we know what is happening throughout the day so we can plan to you know, not take a break during that moment or be in the right place. And also, we have to make sure that you run on time because if we're doing a first look, we need to know that that has a certain amount of time surrounding it so that either we can take extra photos and capture everything you want or we can move it along um, and we can also guide you and give you some feedback surrounding that. So um, you, I always review my timeline and then give insight to my couples and most photographers will do that. It's not to say that there's a certain amount of time you need for each specific thing. It just depends on what your priorities are and where you want to designate the most time for your photos and the most time on your wedding day and all of the things. But that ensures that the photographer is always in the right place. If there is a weather contingency plan, make sure that they have that as well. Um, I always recommend that your weather contingency plan be as good as your ideal weather day so that no matter what you feel um, really excited about what the weather is going to do, uh, I realize that's not always possible, but it is a good place to start if you are able to make that happen. Um, The other thing is a a VIP list or a shot list. So this is going to be the photos and the combinations of people that you want to have photographed with you or without you. So, um, and and sometimes they're very specific. Sometimes it's just the family groups. Um, so I like to have the groups and break them out into the like category. So if it's like, let's say my last name is Alipin. So if it's the Alipins, um, We have that family side, and then we have the names of the people who are in the family. And then I also ask you for the number of people in the photo because that tells me if you're listing yourself or your significant other or not. Sometimes you kind of forget. Sometimes it isn't a photo that you're in. Sometimes you assume you're in all of the photos. That at least tells me that I can make sure and then I can count as I'm lining everyone up to make sure we have the right number of people. And it also helps me prevent someone who isn't supposed to be in the photo from stepping into the photo inadvertently because they hear the wrong thing or whatever the case may be. You always can have a photo bomber here or there too. So um, giving me that number of people in the photos is also really helpful. Um, And if you do have a Pinterest board, and I – People have mixed feelings about these. And you can have whatever feelings you have about them. It's your wedding day. 
for me, if my couples have a Pinterest board, I like to see it because it gives me something to reference. So it doesn't mean that I'm going to replicate every photo that's on there, but it gives me a really good sense of the vibe that excites you. And it then as I'm going through the day, I'm visualizing things a little bit through that lens. We all have our own style as a photographer and you of course, you are hiring your photographer because you like that style. So you're not asking them to replicate it. But it does give me a good sense of, okay, this couple is not interested in the under the veil, like veil flipped over the head kiss shot. Or this veil is, or this couple is very interested in that veil shot. It really helps me have a good understanding. Also, whether they're candids or very heavily posed so that I'm going in, even though I've gotten a sense of who you are, I really want to make sure I have zero questions as we go into your wedding day and I only am coming with answers because I don't want to be anything that um, you know, holds anything up or um, causes additional stress or asks you a question that's really complicated or too hard and you're over- already a little overwhelmed or busy or whatever, excited. Um, there are a lot of things happening on a wedding day and I like to be overly prepared. I also always say you can send me everything you have and I will choose the things I need to know and I, I'll look at everything and make sure you know I don't need it. But I would rather be overly prepared so that, again, I have zero questions and only have answers. And I think that's really the way you want to be. The other thing is I really like to, a couple months out, like usually two months out from the wedding, I'll send an email to my couples and say, hey, I would really love to catch up with you. I want to hear about your wedding planning. Um, you know, Here are a couple things you need or I need from you. Um, here's anything you might need from me. And here's the link to get on my calendar to schedule a um, phone call or a video call. I let them choose which one, different links. And then um, also, if you want to get together in person, let me know. I would love to see you. So um, that I think is a really helpful thing just because it makes sure anything to make sure that your photographer is really on the same page as you is always incredibly helpful. So um, I would say those are those are the big things to send me um, before your wedding day. And I, I think that that really gives you a good setup for success. And of course, each wedding is different. There are going to be things that you need to send for certain venues that you don't need to send for others. But anyway, this is just a blanket. We need this for every event. Um, Or if there are any ceremony restrictions, all those things. But I ask those questions. So you don't have to um, memorize all that stuff. Your photographer should make it easy for you. And you can always ask them questions about what they need to know if you um, are worried you're forgetting something because you haven't done this before. That's okay. We'll help you. Um, What to expect during the editing process? I get this question all the time. And I know that there is a very wide spectrum of how long it takes to edit, whether you get a preview, how many photos comes in your preview. And none of these are wrong. I, you know, some photographers outsource their editing or some photographers just, you know, power through. Um, Some photographers really like to take their time time and are meticulous editors and none of it is wrong. Um, It is probably better if you ask the question in advance. I like to tell my couples in advance. I will tell you that none of my couples retain that information afterward. They always ask for an update, and that's totally fine. You absolutely can ask me for an update or any of your photographer. It's not about – you're excited. Like, you deserve an update. If you want an update, ask me. I'm happy to update you. That being said, um, if we are in the middle of, you know, heavy wedding season – then it's going to take longer to get your photos back unless your photographer is outsourcing what uh, editing because you know you edit in the order at least most photographers do edit in the order of the weddings that they're coming in so what i like to do is i like to send a really heavy preview that has like 60 photos in it and it has the story of the day from my point of view like the 
the top points, like something from each little part, not little part, but every big part of the day, a little sample from the big parts of the day. So that, and just some of my general favorite photos that really pop out to me. Um, that doesn't mean they'll be your favorite photos, but they're mine and I love them and I'm excited to share them. So those are the photos that I do because I am a meticulous editor and I will take my time. Um, I think, you know, it's important to give your eyes a break and then revisit the photos because if your eyes start to get tired, you can sort of see like the color balance changing slightly. And maybe you wouldn't see it, but I see it and I'm going to deliver you an amazing set of photos. Um, it also depends on how many photos your photographer is actually delivering. Some, And that, of course, might be related to the amount of time you're booking for, but you didn't ask me these questions. So generally speaking, most photographers will take, will call down your photos significantly to the best photos that have, you know, of course they're going to eliminate anything that doesn't have proper focus or where they're testing the light or any of those things. They're going to eliminate those off the top. Um, I, if if it's a good photo that I like, even if it's a micro change, I will tend to give that to my couples as well, um, which is also one of the reasons that it can take me a month to two months to edit photos. Um, because if it's a good photo, even if it's like a slight change, but it's like I see something different in your eyes, I'm not going to hold that photo back because that might be the difference in whether you love this photo or that photo. And so I'll just do different editing on each of those photos, but I'm not going to eliminate them because to me, I think it's really important that you have them. Um, now, of course, every photographer has their own style surrounding this, um, but you can absolutely ask questions during the editing process and request an update. Um, but don't be surprised if it takes a longer amount of time than you think it will to get your photos back because um, we really care. That's why we're doing this. and so you know, your photographer isn't going to rush through just to deliver your photos as long as they're worth their weight. Um, they're not going to rush through to deliver their, your photos and then not deliver you a product that they come out of it really proud of that they know is going to make you go, wow, this is what I wanted for this day. So um, I'd rather take a little longer and give you exactly what you want. Um, and so, uh, but of course, ask for updates. We are here to support you. And also, I just love to hear from my couples. So like, send me an email. I'm, I'm into it. Um, and then I wanted to touch on just one thing quickly that I realized recently uh, most people don't think about. And I, I was actually reflecting on my own wedding and realized that I felt weird doing this. So I want to tell you it's not weird. Um, so first of all, when I have delivered the photos to my couples, I am so excited. I have spent months getting ready for your wedding, thinking about your wedding, planning for your wedding. Even if you haven't heard from me, I'm still planning for it and I'm still thinking about it and I'm getting ready for it emotionally. I'm getting all my things together. So I'm thinking about your relationship for a very long time. And then I'm editing your photos and I'm sitting in your wedding day reliving it for, I don't know, 40, 60 hours. You know, it, it can be a lot of time sitting with your photos because I'm culling them down and then I'm going through and editing and then I'm finalizing edits and then I'm putting them in the order of the day and making sure that it flows and tells the story of your day and all the things. So I have sent, spent a lot of time with you that probably you don't realize and I want to hear from you. I I mean, first of all, I want to hear from you in general about how you felt about the photos because I want to know you loved them. I want to know that you're so happy and I want to hear about your family's reactions and all the things because I've been thinking about your families and your friends and how much I loved them and all of the things throughout the process. So reach out and update your photographer. Tell them how you feel. Let them know you love the photos. If you're mom or your best friend or one of the people in your wedding party or your officiant or somebody has a favorite photo that they talk to you about, like, we'll take those updates. I want to hear all of it. And also, stay in touch. Like, I love to hear about what my couples are up to. I stay in touch with almost all of my couples. I just love them so much because we've had such 
an amazing relationship that we've built together and we've spent so much time together and I'm very emotionally invested in my couples. So um, stay in touch. Like I want to hear about your honeymoon. I want to hear about like when if you decide that you want to have kids or you buy a house or any of the things like – no updates are too small. We do this because we love you. And I just wanted to share that uh, that little insight there because I think um, I would have felt funny updating my photographer about that because I wouldn't have thought my photographer wanted to know. And then I realized that every time I deliver photos, I sit for like the next three days like vibrating like, I can't wait to hear back. I can't wait to hear back. And... <laughs> I just wanted to share that insight with you all. So that is all I've got for you today. Um, just a little mini episode about photography for you. So hopefully that gets you a little bit further down the planning uh, pathway for your wedding photography. And thank you all for tuning into The Wedding Dish. I just love being able to share all of this with you all. And um if you want to follow us on Instagram, you can find us at The Wedding Dish Podcast, and you can visit our website, theweddingdishpodcast.com, where you will have show notes. You can apply to be a guest. Um, I mean, you can check out awesome photos, and you can get really cool wedding tips and tricks from couples and wedding professionals, all kinds of good stuff. And don't forget to tune in next week. We have another amazing guest. And give us a follow, rate, and review if you like the show on your favorite podcast platform. And until we meet again, have a great day. Cheers. <laughs>